Hey everybody, hunter, fisher, trapper, trader, guide, scout, and interpreter, and just a country cook, Steve Hall, here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Can you hear me with my sore throat? I can. Boy, I've been fighting it all day, but I want to make this recipe. It's potato soup, and I hate potato soup. Let me explain. When Sheila and I go out to a buffet, if they only have potato soup, I take that ladle and push it down in the middle so just the juice runs in there. You probably do the same thing. And get a couple ladles of that, no potatoes. Break a little cheese on there from over at the salad bar, a little pepper, and that's what I eat. The other night, we went out to the Nashville Nightlife Dinner Theater to do one of our shows. I always pull up front, drop Sheila off, and I go park the car. Well, by the time I made it back, Sheila was behind the counter with Carolyn, the hostess who everybody loves at the Nashville Nightlife Dinner Theater. She seats all those buses of people. Well, she's back there with this crock pot of soup, and she says, you want some soup? I said, what do you got? Potato soup. I said, no, I don't care for that. She said, you're going to love this. I said, all right, to try to be nice. And I got to eating it, and there was no chunks of potatoes in. It had these little slivers of potato, and it had carrots, and it had all kinds of neat stuff and flavor and onions and Wow, it was delicious. I said, what is this? Carolyn said, it's hash brown potato soup. She wrote me the recipe down, and to make sure that this slow cooker heated up fast enough, I put a whole bunch of ingredients in a pot on the stove, and I kind of preheated it to put it in the slow cooker. And let me explain why. When you go on Amazon to buy a crock pot or a slow cooker, look underneath in the description. Nowhere does it say what temperature a slow cooker goes to. I went online and nobody posts it anywhere. So I bought one and I got the owner's manual. Nowhere in here does it say anything. So I'll tell you, I filled it about two thirds full of water, turned it on high, and I let it sit for three hours. Then I stuck a thermometer in there and it went right to 200 degrees. So if you've never known how hot your slow cooker gets on high, it got to 200 and you could see some little bubbles coming up from the water. It wasn't quite boiling yet. And that's important to this recipe because we want to put in half and half at the end, but we don't want to boil it because it'll curdle. And we're going to do a little technique to get it in at the end. But right now, I took a whole bunch of ingredients and I put it from Carolyn's handwritten recipe in a pot on the stove, heated it up, and I'm going to transfer it in here to kind of give it a head start. You know what I'm saying? To bring the temperature up out of that danger zone. So let me go get that stuff off the stove. Put it in here and we'll go from there. All right, I just brought this in from the stove. It's about 165 degrees. And I'm going to go right on down Carolyn's list and tell you what's in here. There's a package of frozen onions, and I thawed them in the refrigerator overnight, 12 ounce. And don't forget, I always put all the ingredients underneath the video so you don't have to worry about that. A bag of frozen onions in there, then a bag of shredded hash browns. And this is, let me see here if I can find, a 30-ounce bag. Oh, man, this stuff is so fantastic. One box of chicken broth. I poured in one box of chicken broth. One whole stick of butter we put in here. One can of cream of mushroom soup. And here's when she kind of threw me. She said, put in a roll of cream corn. I said, there ain't any corn in there. She said, yes, there is. You just can't taste it. Or you can taste it, but you just can't feel the texture because it's cream corn. It's so smooth. And I went to the store, and by golly, they do put it in tubes. This is a 20-ounce tube of cream corn. This happens to be white cream corn. You can use that. But I used the golden cream corn, one tube in there. Let me see what else. Where's my next? One cup of shredded carrots. But I bought a bag of shredded carrots at Kroger's, and then I chopped them up because they're about that long. And again, I don't like big chunks of anything in my soup, so I kind of chopped them up so they were only about a half inch long. Shredded carrots, one and a half packages of shredded cheddar cheese, one and a half. She said you can use two packages if you want, if you like a lot of cheese, but I want to go with her original recipe. Now what we're going to do is we're going to heat this all up for a long time, about two hours on high, and then we're going to put in our cream cheese because the slow cooker directions say even cream cheese will curdle, and we're going to sh show you how we can take half and half 
and cream cheese and get it in there at the end and not curdle it. So let me see if I can transfer this. Can you see what I'm doing, Sheila? I can. All right. Don't want to get my little directions covered with soup because everybody's got a few of them. What I want to do here is try to get... See, I've had this on high, by the way, for the last 20 minutes. So it's really hot. And that's what I want. I don't want anything setting between 40 degrees and 160 degrees in the danger zone, as they say. But I'm just kind of getting most of this over here so I can take this pan and pour it in. All right. Let me see how hot this is yet. Not too bad. The handles are okay. So I'm going to pour this in the rest of it. And there's the rest of our mixture. And what we're going to do is we're going to put the lid on this. It's already on high and we're going to leave it on high for two to three hours and we'll see you when we get back so we can put in our half and half and our cream cheese. See you then. One other thing I forgot to tell you and again I apologize for my sore throat but this soup's going to make it feel a lot better. When I was sampling that soup up at the theater, I said, does this have ham in it? She said, only because I found a chunk of ham in the refrigerator and I cubed it up and threw it in there. She does everything off the top of her head. I even asked Carolyn, where'd you come up with this recipe? She said, I made it up myself. So it just so happened that me and Sheila just got back from her mom's down in Red Bay, Alabama, and she had a big spiral ham, so she sent a whole bunch of it home with us. We had sandwiches and stuff, and I had about three or four little slices left in the refrigerator, just like Carolyn. What's the odds of that? So I'm putting that little bit of honey-baked ham in there and stirring it in. Now, we'll put the lid back on and let it cook for a couple hours. See, Carolyn, I had a little bit of ham in my refrigerator just like you. See you in two hours, you guys. All right, about 30 minutes ago, I softened some Philadelphia cream cheese, and I put the whole package in there, stirred it in, got the lid right back on it as quick as I could. And now it's just now starting to bubble around the edges again. And what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate our half and half. Now I took this half and half out of the refrigerator over an hour ago because I want it to get closer to room temperature. Now to keep milk from curdling there's a few things you can do. First of all don't let it boil. In fact let's check with this smartphone see how smart it is. How do you keep milk from curdling? Here's a summary from the Spruce Eats. So here are some tips to help prevent milk from curdling when you heat it. 1. Don't let it boil. 2. Stabilize with a starch. 3. Avoid strong acids. And 4. Temper the milk. Okay, now what they were saying there is you can put a little bit of cornstarch in here and it'll help stabilize it. And you can also temper the milk. And that's what we're going to do here. Instead of putting cornstarch in, we're going to temper it. And how do you temper it? You take some of the soup that's already hot. Can you see this over here, Sheila? I can. We're going to get a, let me see if I can get, get a little bit of that broth only. And we're going to slowly mix it in and warm up our half and half. It's called tempering. That way it won't curdle. Now the amount of fat content that is in the product that you're using depends upon how easy it will curdle. If you're using 2% milk, it'll curdle pretty easy if you just get close to boiling. If you use half and half or whole milk, even less, half and half, even less, and if you use heavy whipping cream, it almost won't curdle even if you do simmer it a little bit. Now that we've got that stirred in there, we warmed it up, we have tempered our half and half, and here's this quarter half and half that's going to go in here. Let me stir this with my ladle. All right. 
That's what that stuff looked like right there. Man, oh man. Now we're going to bring this back to real hot again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to keep from taking the lid off of this, although I am going to sneak the corner of it up and pop in a little temperature probe. We'll see you in a little bit. Well, we're ready to plate this up. It's nice and hot over here in the slow cooker. Last night about 11 o'clock, I went to Kroger's and I got some of this rosemary olive oil bread. And I took my bread knife and sawed the top off. Then I hollowed it out inside. Looky here. So we got some little pieces of bread to dip into our soup that I hollowed out of the inside. How's it looking, Sheila? It's looking delicious. It's looking good, ain't it? Just wait. The last thing I'm going to do... I love those bowls. ...is open up that slow cooker. I know, and aren't those bowls something else? Mm -hmm. So 11 o'clock last night, I said, I don't care. I jumped in the car, and I had to go down and get some at Kroger's. And it's time to take some of this steaming hot... I'm almost kind of, let me get a saucer, let me get a bowl so I don't spill. That way I can get over here without making a mess. Is that a good thing, Sheila? A very good thing. She don't like it when I drip drops of stuff where they're not supposed to be. All right. Check this out. Oh, wait, we're not done. You know that cheese that I didn't put that second half a bag in there look at this i'm going to just run a little of this so it even goes over the side of the bowl some i don't care looks nice just enough to give it a little color not just cheesed up to death but just enough to kind of sprinkle it around on there and the reason i'm not putting too much cheese on top is because I got another ingredient. Now Carolyn said, you know you can put some green onions on top of that too, you know. I said, all right, so here's Carolyn's addition again, and of course this is Carolyn's recipe for hash brown potato soup. We got to take a picture of this. Everybody's got one of these little pieces of paper in a drawer somewhere with a fantastic recipe. This one came from Carolyn McLean. Carolyn, Thank you so much. You know me, I don't trust these slow cookers, so I kind of preheat stuff and put it in, kind of give it a head start. I was talking to her the other day. She said, you know what, I don't even thaw the hash browns or corner or any of that onions out. I throw everything in there frozen, mix it up. I put the half and half in later. She said, I turn it on high and I go shopping for the day. I come home, stir it, cool it down a little bit, add the half and half, heat it up. I ain't dead yet. And she ain't because she's at the Nashville Nightlife Dinner Theater with the best hash brown potato soup you ever ate in your life. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just telling you that's what she told me on the phone. I get a big kick out of her. Here about three months ago, she went skydiving. This lady is just wonderful. Everybody loves her. We do too. We hope you try this recipe, and we really hope you subscribe to our channel. That's easy. Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in a little bit, and when it does, you click on it, hit on subscribe, and next to subscribe is a little bell. We hope you click that. Then you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. We'll put up some easy recipes over here in our little playlist. But most of all, is this the most delicious, easy to eat because no chunks of potatoes in there. Carolyn's hash brown potato soup you ever made? If it ain't, it ought to be. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. We want to thank everybody involved that helped us put this together. And thank you, Carolyn, because my throat is feeling better already. This is yours over on this side, Sheila. Good. Say good night, Sheila. Good night, Sheila. Mm, mm. Time to kadunk another piece of that bread we hollowed out of there. Mm. I got a straggler. Hold on. Wow. See you next time.